This is Apostle Calvin Brown of Christ Be Glorified Ministries, and welcome to another broadcast centered around the kingdom of God. Amen. Whether you know it or not, amen, that God is over the kingdom of God. Jesus is over the manifested kingdom of God in this earth realm. Amen. And so we come into the knowledge of of the truth as we engage the Lord, as we know him, amen, through the word and by the Holy Spirit, we know him, amen, and then the the revelation, the realization of the kingdom becomes more and more real, amen, more and more serious, actually, amen, as we give ourselves to the truth, the, the knowledge of the truth, amen, and so God is good, we know that, God is is good, that, that is a truth, amen. But the goodness of God must be responded to, amen. God created us, so we were made for God, amen. We were created for God's, for God's pleasure, amen. So when we say that God is good and you bring man into the equation, the fact that we were created for God, and so we taste and see that the Lord is good, we must respond to his goodness, amen. So God is not in a, a, a void, a vacuum, amen. God preexisted man, God created man for his pleasure, amen. And so man must respond to the, the goodness of God. In Psalms 46, verse 1, amen. It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble, amen. So this speaks to the goodness of God, amen, that, that God is for us and not against us. Amen. He is our refuge. He's our strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. So we must avail ourselves to God. We must receive his salvation. We must receive his grace. Amen. We must receive his strength. Amen. We must receive his protection. Amen. The fact that God exists and he created man, we begin to respond to God. So it is a continual thing. It is a continual thing of availing ourselves of the grace of God, the goodness of God. We receive of the Lord and we give him the honor. We give him the glory. We give him the praise. We give thanks unto God because God, God is good. He's our help. He's our strength. He's our refuge. He is, he is our salvation. Amen. So those who come to the Lord to be saved must acknowledge, as Romans 3.23 says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So we needed a savior. And so we accept the Lord Jesus as our Lord and as our savior. And that does not stop. You have to continue to respond to that, our relationship with the Lord and our fellowship with the Lord is us responding to the Lord. So, so that relationship continues with the Lord, amen, according to the truth, according to light, according to righteousness, what God says, according to, according to God's ways, amen. So, so the closer that you cleave unto the Lord, amen, the more you are an enemy to the devil, amen. The, the closer that you cleave to the Lord, the more that you avail yourself to the love of God, amen, and the acknowledgement of the truth and walking in that truth so that there is Nothing separating you from the love of God. There, there's no slither of anything, no, no schism, no, no anything separating you from God. Everything that the Lord reveals, you accept 
Amen. And you and you walk in and you love him for it. Amen. Then you will become an enemy of the devil and you will have to only walk in the glory. Amen. Your, your only existence can be in the glory of God because the devil has made you enemy, number one. But that's no problem with you because that you have power and authority over the devil, especially because you are one with the Lord and you have accepted the Lord way. So there is a way of God, just like there is a way of man. Amen. Amen. That the, the, the ways of men seem acceptable unto them. Amen. There is a way that seems right unto man. The Bible says, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So your way has to become God's way. And so through the knowledge of the Lord or knowing the Lord, which is a word that means being one with him in intimacy, knowing the Lord, it means to be one with the Lord in intimacy. Amen. To walk with the Lord. Enoch walked with the Lord. And then he was not because God took him. He translated him. Amen. Noah walked with the Lord. Amen. And he accomplished the will of God by building that ark. Amen. For the saving, anybody that wanted to be saved could have been saved in that ark. And so that's the message. Anybody that wants to be saved can be saved, but only Noah, his wife, his sons, and their wives were saved. Eight souls, the Bible says. The word of the Lord to Abram, Abraham was, to walk before me and be perfect, amen. And I am your exceeding great reward, says the Lord. So, so walking with the Lord is according to truth. It is according to God's ways. Amen. And so if you walk with the Lord, all that live godly will suffer persecution. Amen. And the reason that you will suffer persecution is because there are those who are not walking with the Lord. They are walking another way. Amen. And so you have victory in Christ Jesus, but there is this dynamic. Amen that there will be those who are against you, amen. Because they're on the devil's side, they walk by the spirit of the world, they walk by the ways of the world. Who are the persecutors? They are those who walk according to the world, the spirit of the world. So everyone buys or everyone invests, amen, in ways or kingdoms, amen. That if you walk with God, it will cost you. The Bible says count the cost. But also, if you walk in the enemy's ways, amen, then the, the cost, amen, is for you to, to, to persecute those who walk for God. Amen. That's what it, that's what it costs you. So the ways of God causes you to cleave to God. And the ways of man, the ways of the world causes you to be an enemy of God, even though through religion, you may say, I'm not an enemy of God. Amen. The Bible says having a form of godliness, but denying the power, the power of God to save, the power of God to heal, the power of God to, to deliver, that you'll find yourself opposed to the way that God brings salvation. You, you'll say all roads lead to salvation. But the Bible declares there's only one way. Jesus says, I am that way, <laughs> the truth and the life. Amen. I'm the way. Amen. So, so those who oppose God are in opposition. Amen. Or those that oppose God's ways is all about um, kingdoms and spirits, what kingdom you're of and what spirit you're of. Amen. And if, if you're not of the kingdom of God, which means that you are a defender of the kingdom. Amen. Which means that you're in the army of the Lord, which, which means that you are arrayed for righteousness. Amen. Hallelujah. Defender 
of righteousness, defender of the truth. Through, through fellowshipping with the Lord, you're kept pure. You're kept holy. You're kept right. Amen. Through fellowship, the acknowledgement of the truth. Amen. Causes you to walk in that light. Amen. So just like the, the promised land, amen, God gave to his people the promised land. They had to cross over Jordan. I taught on that. They had to be uh, converted from Egypt. Amen. <laughs> the, the, the testings in the wilderness, those 40 years was to get Egypt or the world out of them. The, the, the people to open up to a new and living way, a new way, a way which was of the Lord, but they would have to dispossess the enemy. So your inheritance, there were devils on your inheritance that had to be removed. You had to fight. And along with the devils, there are people that defended that way, the way of the world that were against you. Amen. So in essence, they were um, going after the devil's way, the worldly way. So those that went after the worldly way, they want to prove that your way is wrong. It's kind of like when somebody lies on you, they are invested in that lie. So they do not want the truth to come out. Let's just say they were mistaken. Amen. And let's just say they said that you were, you know, a wicked person. But let's just say that they said that you were abusive. Amen. That the husband was abusive to the wife. They, they put that out as, as a lie. Amen. Well, when they find out the truth, they are invested in the lie. So because they have bought into it, amen, they will work for the devil to try to make the lie true because the truth will be harmful unto them. Amen. It would be hurt, hurtful unto them. Somebody says that you abused your children. Hallelujah. Haka Sobra. They said that you were abusive to your children. That your children were in jeopardy. <laughs> now they are invested in the lie. Right. Hallelujah. <laughs> I've seen people that have marital problems and they, they separate or divorced. And I've seen Kobo, Sobo, Rimesha, many times that, that the, whether it was true, many times it was not true that the woman has said that the, the, the man, the husband, was abusive to the children or the daughters or whatever and they put. And so they are so invested in that lie, they'll carry it to court. Mm -hmm. Riding a lie. That's right. they, they are invested in it. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And so what was the remedy? The remedy, of course, is to acknowledge the truth and to repent. Amen. Why? Because... God is good and his goodness must be responded to. So he has mercy and forgiveness for you. But there are those who will not repent. And so they align themselves on the devil's side and they will persecute you. Amen. You who are purposing to live righteously before the Lord. Amen. But everything, every truth will be revealed. The Bible says everything hidden will come to the light. That is one of the things that is coming now. Everything hidden will be revealed because God is true. Amen. Amen. And so God will manifest what is the truth. And so that's what's happening now. You say, what's happening now? That there is shaking as God is getting people on his side. Amen. And he is manifesting the truth. And those that double down on the lie, they will be swept away with the recompense of the wicked. Amen. It's not God's desire. It's not God's desire for, for, for any 
you know, not to be saved. It's God's will for all to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. But I want you to understand there are many dynamics going on that God is judge of heaven. God is the judge from heaven and earth. God is judge over the, the whole earth. He rules from heaven. Amen. Amen. So God, God has to do what God does. And so the, 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 the far reaching, the overarching thing is that God is good. And that good can be responded to at any time. Anybody could have got on that ark. And yet there was a flood. That, that is an example to us for us today. There was a flood that destroyed all of creation except for Noah and those, his, his wife, his sons and their wives, and the animals that God placed upon the ark to, to, to restore restoration to restore the earth. Amen. So those examples are there, even though God is good. Amen. And 2 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, amen. Chapter 1, verses 4 through 6. 2 Thessalonians, chapter 1, verses 4 through 6. It says, so that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure, which is manifest evidence of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God. Now, think about that. You have to be counted worthy. So those tribulations and persecutions are used to help count you worthy of the kingdom of God, for which you also suffer, since it is a righteous thing with God to repay with tribulation those who trouble you, to trouble those who trouble you, to recompense those, those to recompense those that are evil against you. God will recompense. He will repay those that trouble you. Amen. So this is part of the dynamic of God that nothing is happening in a in a vacuum. That that everything affects everything else. Amen. Your job is to live before the Lord, to be holy and righteous before the Lord. And that will make some people angry because your witness, your 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 testimony will show that their deeds are evil. The Bible says Cain he slew Abel because Abel's works were righteous and that Cain's works were evil. And as long as Abel was doing righteous works, it was showing off Cain that his works were wicked. Amen. So you, you because you live righteously before the Lord, there are those who refuse to come over to the Lord's side by that witness or by that light. So they threw their lot in by the ways of of the world. They don't say, people don't normally say, even though there are some, that say that they are serving the devil. They are serving a way or a wisdom. Amen. And so the people that embrace the world, they depend on the things that are of the world and they exalt the things that are of the world as the highest order. And yet there is an above, that is above the world or that is above the earth. And so St. John chapter 3, verse 30 and 31, John the Baptist says that I must decrease, he must increase, that he that is from above is above all. They that are of the earth are earthly, and they speak that which is of the earth. So they speak in earthly language, you know, that when there is a shooting or something in, in a school, amen, the, the earth, the highest order of the earth says that we got we to gotta get these kids some counseling. We got we to gotta get them before psychologists and psychiatrists and everything. And we got to get them some grief counselors. Amen. You say, are you, are you speaking against that? What I'm saying is that is earthly. That is the highest order of the earth. Amen. In the earth, when a person has a problem with alcohol, amen, they go to 
Alcoholics Anonymous or some such group, amen. And the way that these groups conduct themselves, they introduce themselves. They say, I am this person, you know, I'm John and I am an alcoholic. And everybody says, hi, John, <laughs> you know. The highest order of, of the earth, they speak that which is earthly. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and, and there is a greater, there, there is a deliverance. There is a peace, there is a joy, there's a wholeness, there's a soundness in the Lord Jesus. For the Bible declares that he has made fullness. Whatever you need, he fills that void. Holy God, he will deliver you. He saves to the uttermost. Isn't it better to be saved, saved? Amen. To be whole, whole. Holy Ghost. What's wrong with that? But they will snarl against you. Amen. If you say, I'm the healed of God. The enemy tried to come with all these names of COVID. I would not receive it. I would not respect it. Holy Ghost. For Jesus has healed me. Hallelujah. And he keeps me whole. Hallelujah. You say, well, what if something happens and some symptoms come again? That does not change the word. The Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. Amen. That God is justified in his saying when he is judged. Holy Ghost. He says he's our healer. He's our healer. Holy. That's the truth. Hallelujah. You get on the Lord's side and they will hate you for it. Holy Ghost. They will persecute. They will speak against you. They will, they will act against you. Amen. So, so when you come to the Lord to be saved, amen, you, you accept the truth. Amen. And then you begin to draw near to God. He draws near to you. Amen. That's, that's the relationship. As you acknowledge the truth, then the things of the world will grow strangely dim. They will, they will fade away because you're not of the world. Amen. Those who deal with God, there must be an acknowledgement that there is a such thing as good and there is a such thing as evil. So when you're talking about the truth, this is where the world has messed you up. There is a distinction. There is a separation. There's a such thing as good and evil. There's a such thing as righteousness and unrighteousness. God sees it clearly. Amen. God knows what is righteous and what is unrighteous. You say, well, accepting the Lord Jesus, we receive his, his righteousness. Well, there is a truth that goes along with it that comes out of fellowship with the Lord. Knowing the word, knowing Jesus, the word, knowing the truth produces fruits of righteousness. Amen. It produces fruits that attach to the vine that Jesus, I'm the true vine. My father is a husband, man. You are the branches. Unless the branch is attached to the vine, it does not produce any fruit. Amen. That those branches are, are, are cut off to be burned. The Bible says you must be connected to the, the true vine. Amen. And you learn about the, the, the burning. You said, would the Lord do that? No. The, the, the ways of God, God is not mocked. What a man sows, he shall also reap. There is a burning, amen, in this earth. There, there is a burning associated with tests and trials, associated with the, the, the glory of, Lord, of the Lord and what is, what is right. There is a burning that you must associate yourself, be connected to Jesus. You must. In other words, you, you cannot say I'm saved and do the worldly thing. Amen. There is a connection, a continual abiding. Abiding means, let my words, abide in you. Amen. You shall produce much fruit, the Lord says. So there's a good, there's an evil. There's a righteousness and unrighteousness. There's holiness and unholiness. Amen. There are those who are wicked and those that are not. So those who are wicked are against the Lord, even though they have every opportunity to get on the ark. You understand what I'm saying? That people would accuse someone that is preaching like this of hatred. No, there's 
every opportunity to get on the ark. Be saved from this wicked generation. Be saved from this untoward and wicked and dark generation. Amen. Uh, the, 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 the message of the Lord is, is crying out to be saved. Be saved. This world is wicked. Be saved. Amen. But there is a such thing as those that are wicked and they will persecute. Amen. The church. And they will come against those, those who are righteous. Amen. So we are in a time of great revival of many turning to the Lord, turning from darkness to light. Amen. But it is also the beginning of the day of the Lord. And I'll explain that a little bit. So this, this thing for about turning from darkness to light, the Bible talks about how this is the condemnation that light is come into the world. But many people chose darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. OK, so so this is the condemnation when people choose the darkness. They are condemned. Amen. But but the word of the Lord is to be saved, be saved. Amen. From this dark generation, this wicked Generation is the goodness of God. God is God is speaking it to from the mountaintop. Amen. He has given us to speak it from the housetop, from the mountaintop. Amen. We are saying, be saved. Amen. And that is the goodness of God. But God has to deal with that. Those who persecute you, the Bible says that it is a righteous thing to God. Amen. To recompense. Amen. With trouble those who trouble you. Amen. So God is doing both. He is saving. Amen. But for God to do justice, think about this. When God do you good, God does you good. Amen. Those that are opposed to your good, then when God gives you that justice and good, if they were trying to keep good away from you, God, God has dealt with that when he gives you the good. You, you, you understand that, that, that God is able to do both and nobody could say against the Lord that God did them wrong. <laughs> Amen. So that's what that's I guess that's the point I'm trying to get you to see that God, God is good no matter what. His goodness must be responded to those who do not. It is a witness against them that they did not return. That they did not respond to the good, but those that did not respond to the good will be against those who are receiving the good. <laughs> Amen. So this is the time of the day, the day of the Lord. Amen. What is the day of the Lord? The, the, the day of the Lord is the day and the days before the return of Jesus and the, the final judgment. So the Bible speaks of the day of the Lord. Amen. And so I'll just I'll briefly go over some of those things. But when when the day of the Lord comes, the Bible says it burns like an oven with intense heat. In other words, the, the, the heat is turned up. The fire is turned up. And the reason for the fire to be turned up is for people to see what is manifest, what, what is true, amen, so that people would turn to the Lord, but the people who refuse to turn to the Lord, that fire can consume them, amen. So the heat is turned up on purpose so that people will, will see clearly that right is right, wrong is wrong. Ain't no middle ground, ain't no in between, ain't no, you know, college courses about situational ethics. <laughs> Man, <laughs> ethics is not situational. It does not change. God does not change. <laughs> Jesus the same. Today, yesterday, yesterday, today, and forever, Jesus is the same. I am the Lord your God. I change not. Amen. So, so God is, is the same, and, and we identify with the Lord. Holy Ghost. Ain't no situation, no nothing. You, you throw that class away uh, amongst many others. Holy Ghost, don't make me go there. Holy Ghost. Shamariva. Me man, I swear. We crazy for the money. For the money. Woo, chakalabate. You went there for the money, so you took 
You accepted their sentiments, suba. Many of you embraced their sentiments because once it got on you, ha ha ha, you did not go back to the ways that were of the Lord. You did it for the money. Hallelujah. You subjected yourself to that which was not true. Holy Ghost. You say, I must get this degree. I must make the good grades. So when the professors say there's no such thing as God, everybody in mass said there's no such thing as God. <laughs> you did it for the money. Holy Ghost. And God says, the truth is the truth. It, doesn't, it does not matter. God does not change. The truth is the truth. Amen. Amen. Those were those who bowed at the sound of the music, the sackbut, the, the psalms, the, 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 the harp. Amen. That, that, that image that Nebuchadnezzar had made when you hear the sounds of the music bow down. Those were the ones who bowed. Hallelujah. To escape the king's ire, the, the spirit of the world. He, he was very, the Bible says that Nebuchadnezzar's face got twisted, it got contorted. He, he was very angry. Oh, he goes with um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He, he, his countenance toward them changed. That activation, the devil activates, just like God activates. You can say I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a good Christian person until the devil needs you against someone. And then you shall, be, you shall be activated because you regarded the things which were of the devil, the things which were of the world. Hallelujah. And all I say is consider your ways. You say, that's not me. That's not me. All I say is consider your ways. The things that make you angry. Are there people that make you angry? Holy Ghost. Are there, are there Christians, Holy Ghost, that make you angry? Hallelujah. Is it because they are doing righteous things or unrighteous things? Not according to you, but according to the Lord. Amen. Then consider your ways and, and to repent. See, there's, there's, the devil makes it look like it's so hard to repent, to, to change your mind and to change your heart. <laughs> it's simply the acknowledgement of the truth that there is grace on the Lord's side. His grace is sufficient for you. Amen. So there, there is this time. It is called the day of the Lord. I believe that we are in the day of the Lord, a time of intense heat where there shall be a clarification of what is evil and what is good. Amen. There shall be a clarification of what is right and what is wrong in Revelations. The book of Revelations chapter 22. Verses 10 and 11. It says, do not seal the words of the prophecy of this book for the time is at hand. So this time is at hand. He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he who is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he who is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he who is holy, let him be holy still. Amen. So what is this talking about? It's talking about two things. It's talking about the day of the Lord but also before the ultimate return of the Lord, there is a time of visitation, amen, that for you to be refreshed by the presence of the Lord. There's a time of visitation, amen, of the Lord, amen, before he, he raptures us up, that he is visiting now, and so the, the presence of the Lord, which is called the glory of the Lord, is, is in this earth, the increase. Amen. So what is happening now is a, a concentration caused by the concentration of the glory. The concentration of the glory will cause 
They who are righteous are those who desire to be righteous to come to the light. It is, it is what is spoken of in Isaiah chapter 6. Your eyes shine for thy light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. And the Bible talks about how that there is exceeding light, but there is also gross darkness. Amen. Thick darkness in the land because there is a concentration of darkness. The concentration is caused by when, when the Lord makes manifest or he visits or he, he appears, he manifests those who refuse the Lord, they go on the side of darkness. And so that darkness, it increases, it intensifies. It is called gross darkness. But those who come to the light through this revival, this, this renewal, amen, this, this times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord, there is an increase in the concentration of the light as more people come to the light. And so they, they, they act simultaneously. The dark is getting darker, but the light gets brighter or the appearance of the light. The light is already bright. But as people come to the light, there's a concentration of the light in the concentration of the glory. Amen. The Lord gave me a vision, a prophetic vision, and it was a, a great clock that was set in the wall. Amen. And there was a watchman on the wall in every hour that the clock would strike, he would say, you know, that it is eight o'clock. He says, and all is not well. Come into that city of the Lord. Amen. So it was a tower, a clock tower in, in the midst of the wall. And that, and that clock would tick, that it would sound in the, in the, in the crier. Amen. That's God's watchman on the wall says, you need to come in, out from these outward places, these dark places. Come into the city where there is safety. Come into New Jerusalem where there is safety. Come in on the Lord's side. Amen. And so that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the day of the Lord. Amen. That increases in heat and that intensity, ferocity. Amen. It, it increases. Amen. And so it, it, it alarms people to come over to the Lord's side. But if they refuse, they are not only a part of darkness, but gross darkness. Amen. And so there is a recompense of the wicked. The Bible says in Psalms 91, only with my eyes shall I see the reward of the wicked. Well, the wicked are not re being rewarded with good. It is the recompense. Amen. And so many People say, you know, you're, you're talking about judgment before Jesus. Be, because God is merciful, he gives examples of his judgment in this earth. Amen. You, you must know the way. You don't play around with God. I, that's, that's the most that I can say, you know. The Bible says that knowing the, the terror of God, we persuade the men. Holy Ghost. We're not trying to say God is me. I'm, I'm just talking about the righteous judgment. That, that scripture in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 is saying that it is the righteous judgment of God to repay those who trouble you. It is, it is part of that righteous judgment. You are being rewarded with good for accepting the good, though there was persecution against you. It was worth it. You counted the cost, amen, and you received the good, and you did not come off of the truth. You acknowledged what the truth was. There are those who, that they hated, they despised the truth. They, they did not acknowledge the truth, the Bible says, so they are given a spirit of, a strong spirit of delusion because they denied what was true, amen, and so they got the reward, the recompense of the wicked. But the ark was still there. I keep repeating this. Anybody could get on the ark. And when you see the enemy fall, hallelujah, don't have pity <laughs> that, the, that the righteous judgment of God came. Holy Ghost. That take note of that. If you were not on the Lord's side, then come on. The, the fact that you are still alive and you saw the, the, the overthrow of the wicked, there is an overthrow of the wicked. Amen. I'm saying there is a precise 
Not, not ambiguous. There is a precise, there is a pinpoint judgment of the Lord. Though his hand was extended, this judgment is precise. It is, it is pinpoint. If you live to see the overthrow of the wicked and you're not completely on the Lord's side, run. Amen. Even before that, run to the Lord's side. This, this message is to get you to run to the Lord's side. Amen. In Malachi, Malachi chapter 4, Malachi Chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, and all the proud, yes, all who do wickedly will be stubble. And the day which is coming shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, that will leave them neither root nor branch. So in other words, they will not be able to recoup. They will not be able to recover. But to you who fear my name, the son of righteousness, S-U-N, speaking of Jesus, the son of righteousness, the light of heaven, shall arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go out and grow fat like stall-fed calves. So it is contrasting those who receive of the, the heat of the day of the Lord because they refuse to let go of evil. And those that receive the heat, the, the life-giving rays of the son of righteousness. That's what it means. Healing in his wings. You know, if you, you ever seen heat, you ever seen the sun drawn with, with rays, that, that, that is what it means. The wings, the, the life-giving rays of the sun giving life into this earth realm. Jesus is the son of righteousness. And so for this earth, that day will burn up the wicked, and especially the proud. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Those who refuse the Lord and said that our way is better. We will not receive the Lord's ways. Amen. They double down on their wickedness. That's what you're seeing. There are many, many. Amen. Because they thought they were rewarded with money and power and prestige. They rose up in pride and wickedness, amen, and they tried to afflict the righteous. They tried to make the righteous get in line, amen, and so God was teaching this thing, amen, even through COVID and, and all the riots of the summer of 2020 or 2021, all those things that were happening, Amen. God was teaching not to bow to the wicked. Amen. The, the Bible says that it is uncomely for the righteous to bow before the wicked. Amen. And so there were many who bowed before the wicked. And so God says, I got to show them that there is a distinction. Amen. Between righteousness and unrighteousness. Amen. Amen. That scripture in Revelation chapter 22 is like that day will bake you. It will cook you in whatever state. If that day overtakes you, whatever state you are in, you will be stuck in that state. And so they that are unjust shall be unjust still. They that are filthy shall be filthy still. Amen. They that are wicked shall be wicked still. But they who are righteous will be righteous still. It's like that oven will bake you cook you. If that day overtakes you, whatever state you were in, and so you have a warning to repent. Amen. That you have to repent. And so that is the, the great day of the Lord. It, it is like a burning oven. Amen. This is also a time of restoration and restitution. Amen. In Luke, the book of Luke, Chapter 3. Luke chapter 3. Verses 3 through 6. It is speaking of John the Baptist. And he went into all the region around Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet saying, the voice 
of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight, and every valley shall be filled, and every mountain shall be brought low, and every crooked place shall be made straight. And the rough way smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. So this is speaking about Isaiah chapter 40, amen, that the, the crooked places will be made straight. John the Baptist was the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Actually, John the Baptist carried the voice because the Bible says John the Baptist is a type of the spirit of Elijah. And so that voice is crying out now. Amen. It is a voice, amen, that, that prepares the way for the Lord's return. Amen. And so there shall be restoration as the crooked places are made straight. The high places shall be brought low. Amen. The rough places shall be smooth. And so they that were high and mighty, they shall, be, they shall be brought down. Those that were prideful, they shall be brought down. But they that are lowly, according to the restoration of the Lord, amen, they, they shall be brought up. They, they shall be exalted. They shall be promoted. Amen. That the Bible says promotion comes from the Lord. Amen. That if you will humble yourself, the Bible says, under the mighty hand of God, that he will exalt you in due time. So that is this time of restoration. You shall see a turnaround according to righteousness, according to what is right. Those who have gotten gain illegally, amen, they who through vice, they who through corruption, through, through bribes have raised themselves up, they shall be brought down. Amen. The lowly, even those who have done things the right way shall be rewarded also for because carrying that, that time, going through that time of not denying the truth, you humbled yourself before the Lord as the voices on the outside, as the voices of Sodom and Gomorrah has said, will you judge us? Amen. You, you stayed the course. Amen. You kept the plumb line, even though the wicked seemed like they were prospering. During this time, I prophesy that because you've been faithful in little, that God shall reward you in much, that you shall be raised up according to the word which is of the Lord. So, so that which is true, you shall see it according to judgment. The truth shall be revealed according to judgment. Holy Ghost, you get that. What, what is true? You, you, you suffered persecution hanging on to what is true. Amen. It didn't, it didn't look like, amen, that there was much reward except for, get this, the, 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 the fellowship of abiding with the Lord. Amen. Tasting and seeing that the Lord was good. You lived off, you lived off of the goodness of God. Amen. And God began to reveal or to manifest his, his word unto you and you increase. The Bible declares that God shall increase you more and more. Hallelujah. And so it is that holding to the truth that God is allowed to increase you more and more. But now there is an uptick. There, there's another level, so to speak. This is a level of restoration. All the years that the palmer worm, the canker worm, and the locusts have destroyed, the Lord will restore to you. God will cause those who are wicked to bow down and kiss your feet to acknowledge that you were right. Amen. And God shall humble the wicked. Amen. And shall overthrow the wicked. But it was according to the judgment of righteousness. Amen. So there is a shifting. There's a change of status. There is a change of fortune. Amen. And it is for the Lord's namesake. Amen. You know, we don't always get it right, but our heart can be perfect toward the Lord. That Job was a man who was perfect. Amen. Before the Lord, yet he was not right but his heart was true and pure toward the Lord that whatever the Lord would reveal, that is what he would do. He just had not come into the knowledge of the truth. Amen. And so the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, seeking to show himself strong on those, on the behalf of those whose hearts 
are perfect toward him. Amen. So God does many things for his namesake. Amen. Your heart is perfect. You, you didn't know you, you're seeking the wisdom of God. You want to come into the knowledge of the truth by the grace of God. God will make up many, many differences. Amen. That if you came short of the righteousness, which is of the Lord, not sinning, your heart is perfect toward the Lord. The Lord will teach you as he brings you into that day of comfort. The Lord will teach you. In Isaiah chapter 48, Isaiah chapter 48, verses 9 through 11, it says, For my name's sake, I will defer my anger, and for my praise, I will restrain it from you so that I do not cut you off. Behold, I've refined you, but not as silver. I've tested you in the furnace of affliction for my own sake. For my own sake, I will do it. For how should my name be profaned and I give not, and I will not give my glory to another. Amen. So it's, it's a lot here and I don't, I don't have time. God says I'll do things for my namesake, because I don't want my name to be profaned. Amen. The Bible says that God's name is blasphemed amongst the Gentiles. Amen. And what that means is, well, I'll, I'll turn there. I think I got time. In, in Romans chapter 2, Romans chapter 2, what is, what is required of the Lord for you not to be mixed, for you not to be a hypocrite? Amen. In Romans chapter 2, verses 21 through 24. You, therefore, who teach another, do not, do you not teach yourself? You who preach, this is the preacher, that a man should not steal, do you steal? You who say do not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? You who abhor idols, do you rob temples? You who make your boast in the law, do you dishonor God through the breaking of the law? For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you as it is written. So people are living in such a way, God's Christians are living in such a way that they're preaching one thing, but those very things they do and those very things are in their heart. So they are a hypocrite. And God says, because of that, my name is blasphemed amongst the Gentiles. So God will honor his name. Amen. God will make sure people know, hey, I'm God. I'm, I'm holy. I'm, I'm good. And when you're living in such a way that people cannot determine that God is holy and right and righteous and good because the things that you accuse others of, you are doing. Amen. Then God will gain honor for his name's sake. Amen. The Bible says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Thou leadest me in a path of righteousness, the Bible says, for his namesake, amen. So God will lead you in that, that path of righteousness. Those who will follow the Lord as, as sheep, amen. He will, he will make sure you walk the right path for his namesake. You, you have to, listen, you, those who say that we can sin, you, you haven't read the scriptures. God says, I will lead you in the path of righteousness. There's a path of the Lord, there's a path of righteousness. There's a highway of holiness for his namesake. So his name is not blasphemed amongst the Gentiles. Amen. And so very quickly, turn with me to Exodus chapter 10. This will be our, our last scripture. Exodus, I believe our last scripture. Exodus chapter 10, verses 21 through 23. <clears throat> then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand toward heaven and there shall be darkness over the land of Egypt, darkness which may even be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand toward heaven 
And there was thick darkness in the land of Egypt for three days. They did not see one another, nor did anyone rise from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwelling. So I'm, I'm, I'm talking about thick darkness, gross darkness upon the land of Egypt, which is the world. Amen. And so there shall be darkness upon the world. Amen. But there shall be light in the households of the righteous. God made a distinction, a distinction between his people in the land of Goshen and the people that were in the world. Amen. And so the more that God was plaguing the land of Egypt, the more of those in Egypt could, would say, even Pharaoh's, his, his own people said, hey, this is none, on, uh, none other than the finger of God. They began to see th this stuff ain't, ain't you know, uh, is not normal. These, these plagues that, that you're finding yourself fighting against the Lord. God hardened Pharaoh's heart. But his own people, after a while, after a lot of those plagues, they begin to say, hey, you know, our, our magicians cannot reproduce what, what Moses is doing by his God. Amen. And we, we cannot. The, 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 the Bible talks about lying signs and wonders. Amen. That's, that is trying to hold the world in sway, to make the world to conform by lying signs and wonders, but there comes a point of separation where the witches, the warlocks, amen, they, they cannot produce a lying sign and wonder that can equal the, the, the glorious manifestation of the Lord, amen. So the Lord made a distinction between those that were his, Amen. So the Lord says, get on his side. When you see shakings and when you see all this darkness upon the land, he says, get on his side. Later on, we know that we had the blood of the, the Passover lamb up above the doorpost and the lentils. Amen. Where God made a distinction and the death angel did not touch God's people. We are at that place for the application of the blood of Jesus. But do you know what that means? That the blood of Jesus, amen, the Passover lamb, Jesus says that my blood is drink indeed and that my, my flesh is food or meat indeed. That is communion. Jesus says the words that I speak that they are spirit and they are life. And so that, that the Passover lamb, the sprinkling the, of the blood or the spreading of the, the, the blood is that communion being brought in by receiving Jesus, his death, his burial, his resurrection, the shedding of his blood, his, his passion, amen. It's, it's hard to read. Read all the sufferings of Jesus. Get, go through the Gospels and, and go through Isaiah 52 and 53. Read his passion, Holy Ghost. The Bible says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame. That you are to arm yourself with that same mindset so that you will not grow weary in doing, in doing good. So gross, gross darkness, darkness which can be felt, contrasted with the light of salvation. Amen. God's people being spared. Amen. And so we are in that day. This is the day where there's gross gross darkness, but great, great light. Hallelujah. The distinction, there is a distinction. <laughs> Bendo, lava, rakas, murdanyan, sever roma sambarata mosha, dabakasha, ta roma, jembrobo shangarabo. And so there should be eruptions of volcanoes. Hallelujah. As a witness that the Lord, Kayaburma Shababa, is at work within the earth realm so that we can call them out of darkness, that the Lord called Paul to call people out of darkness into the light. The gospel is to call people out of darkness into the light. Hallelujah. And so there shall be eruptions, shandarabu, several volcanoes erupting to, to testify 
Even creation is testifying that this is the time. Hallelujah. And so the lava shell overrun even some communities. Amen. So this is the word of the Lord, not an isolated incident, but the lava, hallelujah, shall overrun some um, towns or communities or villages. I hear I hear the Lord say, hallelujah, shall put the people on the run. And if they do not run, they will be stuck in that place, as it were, like Pompeii. Hallelujah. They shall be stuck stuck in their activities. It shall be a sign that you must move because this is the day which is of the Lord, which burns with in intense heat. That heat which can yama yama robo shamro melt rocks. <laughs> Amen. Even the hardest substance, even the hardest hearts. <laughs> Amen. That the heat shaba robo sha will melt you kaya ya 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 if you turn to the Lord. If not, you will be stuck in that state where you cleaved to the ways of wickedness. Thus saith the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen.